I have little time, so please do not contact me about this information. If you do not understand it, then you should not do it. Please pass on a link to this website to your friends so they can take back our freedom. This information was updated 7-24-2018 concerning traffic tickets in a few states. Also, do not include affidavits of citizenship or underlying non-citizen national. They are now denying passports with such affidavits or the underlining of non-citizen national. At the end of this video is an example of how to stop corrupt officials with an affidavit of treason. Silver bullet to your rights secured by the Constitution, a treatise on state citizenship. Diplomatic immunity. This information is also posted at www.coppermoonshinesteels.com. This treatise contains standing case law on citizenship and a two-page example on how to fill out the passport form. Free yourself from tyranny. Everyone has tried many complicated and time-consuming things to retrieve their rights that are secured by our constitutions and to stop unconstitutional traffic tickets, taxes, prosecutions, foreclosures, depriving you of your Second Amendment right to arms and lawsuits. I will not go into all that has been tried happened and failed will be too time consuming and most would not understand. I will give a brief description of how this works. When you got your social security number, either you or your mom or dad checked off that you were a U.S. citizen on the SS5 application. And then you continued to claim to be a U.S. citizen throughout your life and did so on all of the government forms and applications, which caused you to pay taxes, get tickets, and every other act of treason that has happened to you. The U.S. in this case is the Federal Corporation, the District of Columbia, also known as USDC or the United States. It was created by the Congressional Act of 1871. Also, see 28 U.S.C. 3002-15, United States means, A, a federal corporation. So, a U.S. citizen is a citizen of this federal corporation and not a union state or USA republic. So now it's easy to see that a U.S. citizen is a legal fiction slash U.S. corporation and has no rights secured by the Constitution. Once again, I want to show you a case, Jones versus Timmer, and it's in volume 829, Federal Supplement, page 1226. Um, and you can see here where it gives you an explanation of what a federal citizen is and a lot of people may not be aware of the fact that there is a distinction between citizenships okay and right here it says the privileges and immunities clause of the 14th amendment protects very few rights because it neither incorporates any of the bill of rights nor protects all rights of individual citizens now check out the second part nor protects all rights of individual citizens Instead, its provision protects only those rights peculiar to being a citizen of the federal government. It does not protect those rights which relate to state citizenship. So here, if any naysayer wants to step forward and talk about the distinction between state, uh, state citizenship and federal citizenship, you can see right here in this case, Jones versus Timmer, where they make that distinction very clear for you. Only people have rights secured by the Constitution, not legal fictions. You should have checked off other on the form because you are a state citizen of your state that you were born in, which makes you a citizen of all states and one of the people and a beneficiary of the Republic United States of America Constitution of 1789-1791. A state citizen used to be known as a citizen of the United States with a capital C before the Civil War. But the meaning has been changed twice for the purpose of fraud. The United States of America is the de jure republic government, not the United States, which is the corporation. The preamble to the Constitution establishes the United States of America, not the United States. So we have two different and distinct national governments. This treachery has always been the goal of the enemy.
See the following case law. The idea prevails with some. Indeed, it has expression in arguments at the bar that we have in this country substantially two national governments, one to be maintained under the Constitution with all its restrictions, the other to be maintained by Congress outside and independently of that instrument by exercising such powers as other nations of the earth are accustomed to. I take leave to say that if the principles thus announced should ever receive the sanction of a majority of this court, a radical and mischievous change in our system will result. We will, in that event, pass from the era of constitutional liberty guarded and protected by a written constitution into an era of legislative absolutism. It will be an evil day for American liberty if the theory of a government outside the supreme law of the land finds lodgment in our constitutional jurisprudence. No higher duty rests upon this court than to exert its full authority to prevent all violation of the principles of the Constitution. Honorable Supreme Court Justice John Harlan in the 1901 case of Downs v. Bidwell. It's all about your citizenship. It's that simple. See case law. Taxpayers are not de jure state citizens. Belmont v. Town of Gulfport. United States v. Anthony. The term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen of one of the several states and that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. So you can see in the above case citations that there are two national governments and at least two types of citizens. There are actually many more types of recognized citizens, including a 14th Amendment citizen. But this treatise only concerns two. More case law on citizenship listed at the end. So to reclaim your citizenship, you need to certify your citizenship by getting a passport as a state citizen. Your birth certificate that is required for your passport is proof that you are a state citizen and is your title and deed to your rights secured by our founding documents. It is on bond paper and you are the bond holder slash beneficiary. However, you will not find the term state citizen on government forms because they are deceptively hiding it from the public. They use terms such as non-citizen national, national, or other. When you get your passport, it will look like any other and say that your nationality is the United States of America. This is true if you are a state citizen, 14th Amendment citizen, or U.S. citizen. They do this to hide what they are doing. Remember that the U.S. citizen is a legal fiction, a U.S. corporation with no rights. A 14th Amendment citizen has little rights. A state citizen has absolute freedom and liberty protected by our founding documents. You are not a legal fiction, nor a U.S. corporation slash U.S. citizen, nor are you a 14th Amendment citizen. You are a state citizen of the state you were born in, which makes you a citizen of all the states and a non-citizen national of the United States of America. An example passport form and affidavits included below in this treatise. Fill out the application in black ink as per the instructions. The main things to remember on the passport form is to, number one, put in your social security number. Before, we did not put in the social security number or simply put in all zeros. The older form said the social security number is voluntary in the instructions on the application. It is still voluntary and a felony for them to demand it. See 42 U.S.C. 48A8. But if you leave it off, they may deny you the passport and keep your money. It does not matter that you give it to them. Even if they took the application, they will write your social security number on the form somewhere. So write in your social security number. Two, this is the most important thing to do. All of the other stuff I mentioned does not really matter. It's only a way to make them pay close attention to your application. Every place that it asks if someone is a U.S. citizen, mom, dad, or spouse, or ex-spouse, you check off no. If you check off yes to U.S. citizen on anything, then that makes you a U.S. citizen. Otherwise, you are a state citizen. No one is a U.S. citizen. Not you, or your spouse, or your ex-spouse, or your mom, dad, or children. This is the most important step. No to U.S. citizen on everything. Make sure you get this right. This is the only thing that matters on the application. 
Do not let them bully you into checking off yes to U.S. citizenship. Number three, put in care of with the mailing address and use the standard mailing address with zip code. This means that this is merely where you receive your mail and you do not live in their jurisdiction. And for the permanent address, use RFD or rule free delivery for the address and then the city and state. Then use all zeros for the zip code. This means that you live in the Republic and not in any fictional jurisdiction. If they force you to put something else in, then do it. It is only a way to make them pay close attention to your application. That you checked off no to all questions on U.S. citizenship. Additional things you can do. Four, put without prejudice above your signature. This ensures that you are not a legal fiction and are not contracted away your rights, although this should not be needed as a state citizen. Number five, expedite your passport. The faster you get it, the faster you will be free. In addition, the State Department will delay your passport to the maximum allotted time otherwise. They do not want you to have it. Number six, do not include affidavits of citizenship with your application or underline non-citizen national. You will be denied. Do not sign it until you are in front of the acceptance agent. They are not allowed to refuse your application or make any changes. To do so is a crime. You can report the person to the U.S. Attorney General. What if you already have a passport? Even if you already have a passport from before or have a current passport, you can get a new passport with this method by doing another DS-11. And yes, you have to put down on the application that you had one in the past and show the old passport with the application or fill out a lost form. It does not matter what you put on the previous passport. You're updating your information. Sometimes the State Department will write a passport holder that they are being denied because they already have a passport. I'm not sure, but I think they have updated your information at that point, that you are a state citizen and your current passport most likely shows that when the information is run. Anyone who is denied a passport for various reasons, such as back child support and etc., are still protected. Your information was updated that you are a state citizen. I personally have done all of the above for myself and others. Note. It is rumored that the State Department will require proof of travel such as a visa or other proof of travel. This is because the enemy is in panic. They do not want their slaves to escape. It's merely a way to discourage you from getting this type of passport. And most countries do not require a visa for Americans. So, if this becomes the case, I suggest you simply make a hotel reservation for a night or two across the border in Canada or someplace. Then print off a copy of the reservation for proof to include with your application. You can always cancel the reservation after you get your passport if you change your mind or not able to go. Traps to avoid. Number one, do not put down that you are a U.S. citizen on anything. They used to have places on the forms to check off state citizen, but not anymore. The usual choice they give you is other or non-citizen national. Yes, they make it as confusing as possible. Either is okay, so check off either non-citizen national, national, or other for your citizenship. Or the form may only have a yes or no question if you are a U.S. citizen. Check off no. Checking off no to U.S. citizenship does not prevent you from your benefits or rights. If you are registered to vote, you can still vote. It does not matter. Number two, your social security number is voluntary. But again, if you do not put it on the passport application, you will be denied. So it does not hurt you to use it if you need to, but it is a felony for anyone to compel your social security number from you. See 42 United States Code 408A8. I'm told you can get an EIN number for banking purposes only. Then use that with your passport to get a bank account. Do not give them your social security number when getting an EIN number or it will be denied. Number three, always put the phrase without prejudice with your signature. State citizens do not have to do this, but it sure does not hurt. It means you're not giving up any rights or otherwise contracting. See UCC 1-308, which is formerly UCC 1-207. UCC 1-308, Performance or Acceptance Under Reservation of Rights. A. A party that with explicit reservation of rights performs or promises performance or assents to performance in a manner demanded or offered by the other party does not thereby prejudice the rights reserved. 
Such words as without prejudice, under protest, or the like are sufficient. When you get a job, fill out the I-9 form. Check off non-citizen national. You can use your social security number here if you wish, but the form itself says it's voluntary, and they will hold out social security, but not taxes. But you do not have to. The employer has the choice of your passport for ID or both your driver's license and social security card. Use your passport for ID. Claiming state citizen does not prevent you from getting any benefits from anything. Sign everything with the phrase without prejudice. I, as well as others, do not use the W-4 form for tax withholding. We use the W-8-B-E-N. Some employers will not accept it and demand a W-4, but it is illegal for them to demand it. But it seems most employers will and should accept the W-8-B-E-N. You do not have to file taxes. If you feel uneasy about not paying taxes, you can continue to pay them and see how your passport works for you. But you're only feeding the USDC beast that is enslaving the country. When you buy a gun and fill out the form, do not check off that you have renounced your U.S. citizenship. You never were a U.S. citizen, so there is no citizenship to renounce. I bought plenty of guns since and use my passport for ID rather than a state ID. Again, not everyone understands this, so some gun dealers are apprehensive. Just tell them to run the application. If anything is wrong, they will deny it, which has never happened with anyone I know. Never put down you live in the United States, you live in the United States of America, or simply say you live in America. On lots of forms, you will see United States, but they do not make it clear if it's the federal corporation or the republic. I believe it asks what country you live in, then it must be the republic, not the corporation. The corporation is not a country. You find this all through the United States Code and the Code of Federal Regulations for the purpose of confusion. So study carefully to see what they mean by the United States. Once you receive your passport, you should never have to pay taxes. You can carry any gun. You should not get tickets. You do not need license, permits, and fees. The bills of exchange will work. They cannot come after you for debt or foreclosure. You may get a few letters for not paying debt, but you cannot be sued for it. Simply send back any summons with a cease and desist letter as mentioned later, or better, do not answer it. They cannot even get a default judgment. The only thing you cannot do is cause injury. They can arrest you for causing injury to someone, and anyone that causes injury needs to be arrested. Even though you can do all these things, I highly recommend that you do not shove it in their face. Be on good behavior and do not draw attention to yourself. Also, give any police officer a friendly chance to discover who you are. Hand him whatever he asks for. Most usually, you will not get a ticket in most states except for three. I'll address that later. If he writes you a ticket, sign it without prejudice and forget it. Do not go to court. There is nothing they can lawfully do. Several law enforcement officials have confirmed for me that when they pull someone over, that is red flag or restricted because of state citizen passport, that they have no jurisdiction to arrest them or write tickets. But they are told to write the ticket anyway and let the court handle it. They have no idea what happened. Nothing did happen. Do not pay the ticket. Do not go to court. However, there are now currently two or three states that I know of where the shadow government, deep state criminals, have taken over and sometimes will instruct the officer to give you a ticket. At this moment and time, they are Arkansas, Missouri, and Colorado. And I've heard of a couple more states since. I didn't know what was going on at first, but we found out from a government official that the State Department has not been putting people all the way over to state citizen status for the past few years. Unlawful, of course, but they put you over to red flag status for an unknown amount of time. Then, if there are no incidents, they put you over to state citizen status. The difference is only concerning traffic tickets. Everything else, such as taxes and lawsuits, are still the same. Do not worry about that. Since the passport removes your social security number and name from all the government attack systems, they cannot come after you that way, so they attack the driver's license itself. They suspend the license and put a warrant on the license. They will not arrest you, but will continue to pile up the fines and warrants. Then, when you apply for a job, all of that stuff pops up and you cannot get a job. Now, you do not need a license any longer, and some have chosen to turn theirs in. And the passport is all they hand the cop when pulled over. I know them. See the following case law. 
the acceptance of a license in whatever form will not impose upon the licensee an obligation to respect or to comply with any provision of the statute or with the regulations prescribed that are repugnant to the Constitution of the United States. W.W. W. Cargill Company versus State of Minnesota. Volume 180, U.S. Reporter, page 552, year 1901. Also see... Speeding, running stop signs, traveling without license plates or registration are not threats to the public safety and thus are not arrestable offenses. Christie versus Elliott. You turn it in at the DMV and get a state ID. In most states, you cannot have both a state ID and a driver's license. So by getting a state ID, you must not have a driver's license. They cannot suspend or put a warrant on a license you do not have. In this way, they cannot write you true tickets. If they do, it's worthless, and they cannot suspend or revoke a license you no longer have. And many, including me, have reported that the letter followed by the nine-digit number on the passport lets them buy insurance, escape sales tax, buy guns, get the international driver's permit, and etc. I and my family at this time have car insurance using only the letter and number under the picture on the passport card. Do not give them your social security number, or it will link up your state driver's license. Most people have found that by using the letter followed by the nine digits on the passport card that their auto insurance is 20% to 50% cheaper. Mine is about 25% cheaper. Not all insurance companies will do this. It seems to me about 7 out of 10. And you cannot do this online. You have to call the insurance company by phone. You cannot get insurance on your car if it is not registered. But then again, if you have the state citizen passport and have turned your license in for a state ID, then you do not need to buy insurance. And you can call the county assessor and unregister your car or truck. Tell them you no longer have it. This takes your car completely out of their jurisdiction. I would leave the plates on so that the police car's automatic license plate readers can still read the plate and there would be less chance of getting pulled over. Now in full disclosure. I personally have not turned in my license or unregistered any of my cars, but I'm never bothered. They know I will put up a fight. And just like any criminal, they are terrified of an armed victim. I'll take them to task many times, and they have not bothered me in about five or so years. But I cannot guarantee that you will not run into a corrupt official. So here's how I helped a friend put the hurt on some corrupt officials in Arkansas. If you want to keep your license and you live in one of these states that will write you a ticket, then simply show up for court with at least one witness. This will give you two witnesses, including you. The more, the better. And your birth certificate. Continue to show your birth certificate and say you are a state citizen. Dismiss this case. Do not get yourself into contempt with a corrupt judge. Do not plead. Pleading perfects the jurisdiction of the court. And do not take a plea bargain. Currently, the states I know about is Arkansas, Missouri, and Colorado. No other states report this problem. If the judge runs over you, then you and your witness can write an affidavit of high crimes and treason committed by whoever the judge, cop, and prosecutor are, by however many witnesses you have. At least two, and the more, the better. Make lots of notarized copies and send the complaint to the state attorney general, governor, president, secret service, FBI, and etc., if you really want to hurt them, make a public record with your circuit or county clerk of records and then mail out copies from the clerk to the aforementioned officials, the Secret Service, President, and etc. Then do not answer any suit that comes your way. Typically, it is stupid for them to sue you if you have at least two witnesses because it now becomes a part of the court record and they must be prosecuted. This ruins their government career forever because it comes up on all background searches. It is also acts as a Les Pendens lien on all of their property and assets. They will not be able to sell their property or borrow money, but reserve this for half two cases. We only did this because they would not relent. I typically find the state officials in Arkansas will do nothing to help you. They seem to be the most corrupt. Always use the passport for your ID where possible. Some places will give you a hard time while buying a gun and etc. But once they run it, they are surprised to find that they can sell you one. You can order the passport card, book or boat. If money is an object, I highly recommend that you order the card to carry in your wallet or purse. It's cheaper. When the officer runs your ID, he or she will see your status and has to let you go. The status most law enforcement sees on your background check is similar to the following. Restricted. Do not stop. Do not detain. Do not interrogate. 
lifetime concealed weapons permit. The latter is to mislead the officer on why you may have a gun on you. You have your Second Amendment rights back. I always try to educate the officer on citizenship, but their overseers mislead them from the truth. No police officer or other official will confirm that you're on the red flag or restricted list. I don't care if you have known the officer personally for 20 years and live next door to him. They will not confirm that there is anything different about your information. They do not confirm anything for me, and they will not for you. Now, do not completely blame the law officers for their actions. They have been brainwashed by the truly evil people in government, elected officials, the Bar Association, and bankers. So it's a little unfair to them because they have so badly been misled. But they still have an oath of office, so there is no excuse for their behavior. If you are in law enforcement and reading this, I hope you will look at your oath of office and then the Constitution you are sworn to uphold. Dig for the answers and educate yourself. I have a great respect for law enforcement that actually protects the people and puts their lives on the line for others, but I have no such feeling for those who violate their oaths of office or cause trouble for people when there is no injured party as required by the common law. See the following case law. For a crime to exist, there must be an injured party. There can be no sanction or penalty imposed upon one because of his exercise of constitutional rights. Sherrard v. Cullen, Volume 41, Federal Reporter, page 945. I have received a passport using this method, and so have many others using this method. I do not pay income taxes, I do not get tickets, I do not have to register things or get permits or licenses, and I am left alone for the most part. I do get a fishing license from Arkansas because I like the work they do with the money, and it's cheap. And I got it with my passport, not a state ID, but I never signed it. So weigh your options. Some folks get rid of their driver's license and deregister their cars, but some employers require one. Uber, for example. I do not suggest any of this one way or the other. Decide for yourself to what extent you want to go. I have found this to be the silver bullet. It is the difference between night and day. Foreclosures are stopped cold because they cannot collect debt against a state citizen valued in anything other than gold and silver coin. But if you are in a non-judicial foreclosure state, it could be a different story. See U.S. Constitution Article 1, Section 10. Federal Reserve notes are not gold and silver coin. Prison sentences for those out on bond have gone away. Real estate taxes have disappeared, and I can go on and on. But experiences do differ throughout America. Sometimes warrants go away. Sometimes they do not. But they are supposed to. Anything you have in controversy before you get the state citizen passport may persist afterward. If it does, you can settle it. Then you are free and clear. See how the passport works for you on small things before you go to bigger things. This treatise is not to be taken as legal advice, and I do not accept any liability for what you do with the information. Please do not share this treatise with those of questionable morals. About Taxes Article 1, Section 10 of the United States of America Constitution, 1789-1791 Prohibit states from using anything but actual gold and silver as tender in payment of debt. So how do they tax you in the Federal Reserve notes? Federal Reserve notes are defined as obligations in 18 United States Code, Section 8, and Title 31 United States Code, Section 3124, prohibit states from taxing federal obligations except for corporations. So if a U.S. citizen or resident alien can be taxed in Federal Reserve notes, then they are a United States corporation slash U.S. citizen. A state citizen is not, and no constitutional tax can be levied against a state citizen, and Congress has not authority over state citizens. Since many across the nation have figured out the citizenship fraud and are correcting the fraud via passport, the enemy is in panic. The IRS has the right to inquire about taxes if you cannot prove state citizenship. See the following case law. Unless the defendant can prove he is not a citizen of the United States, the IRS has the right to inquire and determine a tax liability. United States versus Slater. So, order lots of certified copies of your birth certificate, then make sure you include a certified copy with any correspondence with government. If you receive letters from any government entity, mail them the birth certificate with a letter telling them to cease and desist. An example cease and desist is at the end of this treatise. Do this for each and every letter they send you. Always mail it back to the address you got it from, as well as to the address they want you to answer. They may send you a letter from a different address later. That's how they try to get around it. I mailed about seven letters before they stopped. Some of the envelopes I didn't even open. 
Do not let them scare you. Then they are finished. This goes for any government entity. An example cease and desist is at the end of this treatise. Do not panic should you receive scare letters, certified mail or not. They're meant to scare you into capitulation. They are meaningless, but they look like they have official jurisdiction and cites lots of law and etc. They most typically use words such as offer, request, proposal, notice of non-filing, you need to, we want you to, we need you to, possible prosecution, note the word possible, and etc. And the enemy sometimes stuffs your mailbox full of these official looking scare letters to enhance the scare factor four or five at a time and send them often. They're trying to scare you into obedience. These letters are carefully crafted to leave you shaking with fear. The people who receive them send back a cease and desist letter with birth certificate. An example cease and desist is at the end of this treatise. This should be your reply with a birth certificate to each and every letter you receive from any source on any subject. Should you receive follow-up letters, simply send the same thing each and every time and include a birth certificate because it's proof of your state citizenship. A lot of folks do not even open the letter. They simply send it back with a cease and desist and a birth certificate. Most people have reported receiving five to ten letters before they stop writing. They cannot do anything, so do not worry. I personally received a letter that said I had ten days to comply with their request. I laughed out loud and threw it in the trash. Complying with a request, proposal, notice of non-filing, offer of settlement, or anything with such wording is not mandatory. And had they used words like demand, amount due, tax court, answer with a cease and desist letter with a copy of my passport and birth certificate, and do not let them scare you with any threat. There's nothing they can do to you. Government officials are not even allowed on your land. Your land is a lodeo. Do not let them scare you into compliance. Fear is their only tool. Bank Accounts and Financial Institutions ID Banks and other financial institutions are required to have a customer identification program. Most usually, they want your social security number and other forms of ID. However, this does not apply to a state citizen, and they use the term non-U.S. person rather than state citizen. A non-U.S. person slash state citizen only has to show their passport. See the following statutory code. Title 31, Code of Federal Regulations, 1020.220, Customer Identification Programs for Banks, Saving Associations, Credit Unions, and Certain Non-Federally Regulated Banks, A42. For a non-U.S. person, one or more of the following, a taxpayer identification number, passport number and county of issuance, alien identification card number, or number and county of issuance of any other government-issued document evidencing nationality or residence and bearing a photograph or similar safeguard. However, you'll find the bank employees will refuse and not have a clue about this. So take in a copy of this law with you, including Title 31, Code of Federal Regulations, 1020.220A42, and 42 United States Code 408A8, showing that it is a felony to ask for your Social Security number. Point out that the passport merely says you are a national and not a U.S. citizen. If you are not successful, it really doesn't matter to use your Social Security number because you are a state citizen. But the bank and or their employees are committing felony. See 42 U.S.C. 408A8. You may want to make a complaint to the federal prosecutor or other agencies that have jurisdiction. But you can also apply for an EIN number for banking purposes only. Do not give the SS number or you will not get it. Then use that number in lieu of the SS number. Lawsuits. Once you have the state citizen passport, do not answer a lawsuit. They cannot even get default judgment against you. If you answer it, then you may get hurt. I have not heard of one successful lawsuit against a state citizen, and most did not answer. If anyone calls you about anything legal, simply say, I cannot determine who you are over the phone, then hang up. State Citizenship Case Law. U.S. v. Anthony, Title 24, Federal Reporter, page 829-1873. The term resident and citizen of the United States is distinguished from a citizen of one of the several states, and that the former is a special class of citizen created by Congress. We now have in our political system a government of the United States and a government of each of the several states. Each one of these governments is distinct from the others, and each has citizens of its own. United States v. Crunkshaft. Volume 92, U.S. Reporter, page 542, 1875. 
He was not a citizen of the United States. He was a citizen and voter of the state. One may be a citizen of a state and yet not a citizen of the United States. McDonald versus state. That there is a citizenship of the United States and a citizenship of a state. To Shiro versus Jordan. Cease and desist. Private, this is not a public communication. Notice to agent is notice to principal. Notice to principal is notice to agent. Applications to all successes and assigns. From, and you place your name, always retaining all rights, care of postal service. You're going to use your mailing address, your city and state, union state, USA, US without, and I usually put non-domestic without the United States. Zip exempt, but near, and put your zip code. Whoever wrote you the letter, put their name here. IRS headquarters, whoever wrote you the letter, put their name here. IRS headquarters, attention to all that may concern, and then the address. Attachments, you're going to include your birth certificate and your statement of facts. It is a fact that I, and you're going to place your name here, am a natural born state citizen of, and you're going to put the state you were born in there in its constitutional capacity as one of the several states of the union, and I am an inhabitant thereof. It is a fact that my birth certificate is proof that I'm a state citizen of, and you're going to play the state you were born in, see attached birth certificate, that my state citizenship of, and you're going to put your state in place of Arkansas, has been certified by the U.S. Department of State, see attached copy of passport. It is a fact that I am not a U.S. citizen or United States citizen, resident, person, individual, or any other legal fiction, nor have I ever been. It is a fact. I explicitly reserve all my rights, always and forevermore. It is a fact that, that the United States, with intent and great deception, uses the term United States citizen to deprive the people of their rights, their birth rights, their property and freedom, and further, to regulate the status of the people to that of livestock. Owe you nothing, nor do you have any jurisdiction over me. Your constant, unceasing letters from you and your satellite departments that harass, threatens, attempts at coercion, scare tactics, stalking, and all other actions are depriving me of our right to tranquility, guaranteed by the preamble of, and the rest of the Constitution for the United States of America. You're violating the RICO laws, and I believe he meant to put stalking laws, depriving rights under color of law as well as the common law and the Constitution. Your actions are also acts of treason and tyranny. Order you to cease and desist all activities against me. Signed and dated. Hey, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you get notifications of further videos that we drop on various subjects related to your state sovereignty and your privacy. We'd also greatly appreciate it if you donate. Hit that donate button. All right, peace to the gods, and I'll see you on the next video.